I gotta tell you folks, ever since I started trading, I like Mondays a heck of a lot better. It's the weekends that get on my nerves now. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top It Hot. And it is Monday. It's May 20th. Now what I like to do on this show is share some due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day from bell to bell. I am constantly looking for stocks under five bucks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. So I got something to share with you at the end of the day on these videos. Now normally when I find these hot penny stocks, I'm looking at the charts for a lot of reasons. One, I'm normally looking at charts anyways, I'm just there. But honestly, the fact is I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. Compared to reading news, oh heck yeah. And at a glance, I mean a literal glance, I can tell you if there's heat in a chart. Anybody can. Once you identify a chart that has heat, then invest the time to do research and due diligence on their stuff. Go through their press releases and their filings. See if you can find a hot piece of information. You get a hot piece of information to match a hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And that's what we got here with ticker R-O-N-N, Ron Motor Group. She has got a hot chart because she had big news come out today. This company is working in the hydrogen sector. We've been seeing a lot of attention being paid to hydrogen here. Last week, we covered two companies. Between the two of them, I think it was over $150 million that came into the companies from private companies and from the U.S. government. I think the reason is, is because lithium mines are not getting the approval to get the lithium out of the ground. We can't do an EV transition without the lithium. I mean, we're already building recycling plants for the lithium. I think maybe we're getting the cart ahead of the horse. And this is the problem. There's a lot of companies that are building up and building up, but we're not getting there. So I think we bypassed them because back then when we started looking at EVs, we didn't have hydrogen down pad for energy. Well, enough time has passed and enough technologies come forward that we can. We can get all the hydrogen we want. It's not a finite resource like lithium. It's super duper clean to process. We've gotten that down pat. We don't have to rape the earth, process it, recycle it, none of that stuff. And there's all sorts of benefits just from creating hydrogen. So hydrogen is where we're going, folks. In my opinion, we're going to bypass lithium completely and go right into hydrogen for our vehicles, for our homes, our, our enterprises, all sorts of energy. And the company has got news today about a lot of money that just came into their company. And we're going to cover all of that. So she finished today. I shouldn't say finished because we are still getting aftermarket activity here. Currently, we are at 1.3 cents roughly. We are now up 262% today, though we were up at about 400% at our high. Now, this is on the bottom tier of the OTC the riskiest tier. This is the pink. She is current. She's got no problems. We've got verified information up here. And that is the problem with pinks. You don't get validated information. You got to take management's word for everything, which is why a lot of people get taken by pinks. The only validated information you get is a verified profile. Not quite sure what comes with that. And a validated transfer agent. Now, that's real important. You want to learn something? <laughs> Look up what a transfer agent does and you'll definitely agree that's important. So we've got the validated information. This is a pink that's as good as it's going to get. What does the company do? Well, let's focus in on the information from their website. This is ronmotorgroup.com. Pretty easy to remember. You shouldn't have a hard time finding it. They tell us here that Ron Motor Group is a global zero emission hydrogen fuel cell automaker. They don't make the fuel cells, they make the cars that use the fuel cells. The company was founded by Ron Ford. Oh, what a bummer. I mean, think about that. His name is Ron Ford. Who names their car company after their first name? It's always the last name, right? Well, I think if he'd have tried Ford Motor Group, he'd have probably found himself in court. Hence, we have the name Ron Motor Group. Ron Ford has spent his entire career in the automotive industry exploring ways to be innovative and pioneer innovative technologies. Well, he's in the perfect place at the right time right now. They tell us here that Ron Motor Group 
is designing middle mile trucks and expanding into SUVs for commercial uses. The company works with global automotive manufacturing leaders and currently has negotiations for several distribution agreements. Now this next sentence we're going to get news on. The company is also teaming up with a leading hydrogen fueling company to develop a hydrogen fuel distribution infrastructure here in America as well as in key countries around the world. Getting more information about their products. They want to work with SUVs, but they're not there yet, but they do have their mid-sized trucks, their work trucks for inner city. They tell us here that Ron Motor Group designs and manufactures zero emission hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles, which they like to call HFCEV, or we can call it HV, which would you prefer? Their uh, specifications for these trucks, they are expected to have 300 to 320 kilowatt electric motors. They are evaluating a two speed transmission. Is that from three down to two or one up to two? <laughs> Is it going to be fast and slow? I don't know what it's going to be. A 90 to 100 kW PEM fuel cell. Now, folks, you're going to hear more and more about the PEM fuel cells. PEM is a diaphragm that they're using inside the most modern fuel cell technology. The problem with fuel cells is the way they process the energy creates forever chemicals, PFASs, which are harmful to humans and they last a long time, <laughs> hence the name forever chemicals. Well, fuel cells as they have been being made put off these forever chemicals. P EM fuel cells use a special diaphragm that does not put off PFASs. So that's a bloody good thing. They also have a small lithium battery to capture regenerative braking. There is actually energy to be caught every time you hit your brakes. And they've got a lithium battery that grabs up all that energy and stores it. And you can use it in your electric vehicle. The hydrogen storage is about 35 to 45 kilograms and the vehicle can travel about 500 kilometers on a single refueling. That's about 310 miles. They tell us that these trucks are intended to be cargo couriers for delivery services. They are designed to be comfortable, intuitive, durable, and free of emissions. That's key here. Built on variable chassis, and manufacturing is set to release in the USA, Europe, and China markets. Now, it's great to have a company launching anywhere, but to be launching on three different continents, that's huge. Speaking of huge, I'm trying to imagine these vehicles, because those aren't real small. Those are pretty bloody wide, and a lot of the roads in Europe are really wee. When you put cars on both sides, they are tiny, but I'll I'll tell you folks, I lived in Scotland for 10 years. I was amazed to see how they could drive an 18 wheeler around some of those roads. So now you've got an idea of what the company is doing. Kinda. This is only half of what they're doing. They don't have information here about their hydrogen production storage delivery infrastructure. And that's what they're working on right alongside this. And we are going to get information about that from the news. So let's go take a look at that news and information on the stock. So taking a look at the relative volume for Ron, how'd she do today? Oh, it exploded. Not super duper big, but that's nice. She went from 50 million shares a day over the last 30 days to over 280 million shares. So we are looking at about five and a half times her normal volume. That is 550% increase. There's a lot of excitement around the company right now, as there is around a lot of hydrogen companies. Share structure for the company, please let go. <laughs> Outstanding share count is kind of high. We're at about three quarter billion, but look, they got four billion shares up here, folks, so they could flood the market if they wanted to. They haven't. We've got about three quarter billion. Insiders own about uh, a quarter billion shares. And these are the exact same shares that we own. We're not talking about preferred shares, restricted shares. These are regular common shares like me and you. So they've got a quarter billion. We got just under a half a billion.
It's not a low float by any means, but it is what it is. Market cap for the company's kind of low. We're down here at two and a half million. Financials for the company. Are they making any money? Get out of there. I hate that bar up there. Oh, we got nothing coming in on the annual. Eh, nothing coming in on the quarterly. He gads. Check that balance sheet. Well, we've got some money in the bank. No, it's not $26. We got to add three zeros, thank God, to any of the numbers on any of these charts. So in the bank, they got $26,000. Total assets, well, that's more like it. They got $19 million in assets, only $26,000 in the bank, but they got almost $20 million in assets. And liabilities are less. We're just over $15 million. So even though they're not making any money right now, they tell us we have stockholder equity of $4.5 million. But you see the date here. This is at the end of December 2023. They just came out with a financial. Now, there's no revenues on it to talk about, but there is something I want to point out. We have more stockholder equity. Total assets looking from December, the one I just showed you, to March, which has just passed, our assets have not changed. I mean, literally, they're dollar for dollar exactly the same. But our liabilities dropped from 15.3 million down to 8.7 million. I don't know exactly why, but they dropped, which has now increased our stockholder equity. We're going from 4.4 million to over 11 million now in stockholder equity. So they're not making any money, but we're not holding a bag here. Literally, it's not a bag. Now, if you want to get a halfway decent idea of what the stock is worth, if you take that stockholder equity right there, $11 million, and divide it by all the shares. How many shares did we have? Let's take a look at that. Divide it by the total amount of shares. That should give you a rough idea what the company's worth based on its assets. All right, let's go take a look now at the disclosures. We got nothing here since 2023, and all of our financials are up to date, so we've got no problems here. Let's take a look at our news now. Whoa, <laughs> we got a lot of news, but don't worry, we're not going to dive into every single one. However, there are a few I want to share a little information with you from. I've gone all the way back here to when the company changed their ticker to R-O-N-N. -N. That was back in August of last year. Then we had an important news press come out on the 25th of October. So important that all the rest of this news is building on top of this. Turtle Island Hydrogen Group and Ron meet with five First Nations Canada tribal chiefs and energy executives. They want to build some infrastructure up there in Canada for hydrogen, a place to store it, a place to distribute it from. Now jumping ahead of the news here, it is approved. April 11th, they update us, telling us that it has been approved up there. They are going to start building it. Now, what's very interesting is once this started being talked about up there, it created a lot of buzz. And there's a lot of other areas up there that want their own hydrogen facilities that have approached the company. The next piece of news is crucial. Ron signs agreement with IM One Development to provide project development services for Ron's Hydrogen Pilot Program in Canada. This is the one with the tribal chiefs. The company has signed with IM One Development. They are going to be the developers, the builders, designers. They're going to do everything it takes to build these seven pilot programs on 25 acre parcels of land located within the Canadian tribal tracts of land authorized under the guidelines of the First Nations authorities. So they've got lots of property and seven pilot programs that they are going to jump into and they just hired a company to take care of all that building for them. And understand, they hired this company before it was approved. Yeah. Then in December, Ron signs exclusive agreement with Net Zero Global Pioneers in the Environmental Credit Market. We're talking carbon credits here, folks. There's a lot of money to be made if you are helping the environment by either eliminating carbon or preventing carbon from getting out, like Tesla. Tesla was getting all sorts of carbon credits from the American government, so much so that one year she was actually $31 million in debt 
but she was up $105 million just from her carbon tax credits. I don't think Tesla would have survived with all that free money that they got. And this company is lining up for that. And they just hired Net Zero to take care of it all for them. So the way it works is they'll probably get a certain amount of tax credits for every single car that they make. Who are they going to sell these tax credits to? The polluters. The companies that are putting all the carbon in the air are being forced to buy tax credits as a punishment for what they're doing. So people doing good sell them to people doing bad. And that's how money exchanges hands. Then here at the beginning of the year, the company canceled 100 million shares. That's a good way to start the year, a bigger piece of pie. Then on the 16th of April, the company agrees to work with H2H to integrate their patented products into Ron Global Projects. Now, the next three pieces of news I do want to dive into, so we'll just go from here. Looking at the piece we were looking at on April 16th, Ron Inc. and H2H, along with various partners globally, will sign a letter of intent to integrate and commercialize H2H's many hydrogen proprietary products, which include leading edge proprietary hydrogen storage and hydrogen air conditioning. You like that, don't you? Mr. Ford added that our friends at H2H already have agreements with groups in India with whom we are presently developing commercial relationships and potential joint ventures with. A partnership with H2H would potentially open doors for many of the groups they are already in relationships with. Now this news picks up where that one left off. The company announced today that it has signed the letter of intent to form a joint venture with its longtime friends at Hydrogen Horizons. The purpose of the joint venture is to work together and further enhance the commercialization of hydrogen around the globe. H2H is a leading pioneer in the hydrogen space with patented technologies of advanced hydrogen storage and hydrogen cooling systems. Our goal is to support H2H and incorporate as many of its products into our FCEVs. Let's just call it an HV. <laughs> the patented storage solutions could actually extend the range of our hydrogen logistic vehicles. So they'll push that 300 miles, maybe to 400 miles or more. Who knows? Hydrogen Horizons is already working with Ron to provide vehicles for their Barbados project. Wasn't aware of that one. And they also added that they will be introducing and working to bring Ron Inc. into their many other projects globally. The doors are just opening for this company. And then the news that is big, this didn't come out today. It actually came out on the 16th, but it's big news. Ron has signed a memorandum of understanding, not to be confused with a letter of intent. Think of it this way, you got three stages, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, an LOI, Letter of Intent, and then you close the deal. Well, think of a pool, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, is your feet just dangling in the water sitting on the side of the pool. A Letter of Intent is coming in on that first step and you're up the water up to here, but you're not actually in the water yet. You are, but you're not totally committed yet. And then when you close the deal, you dive in. Well, right now, we just have our feet dangling in the water with this memorandum of understanding. But it's a good one. They have signed a letter of memorandum of understanding providing 100 million euros in total financing capital commitment. This is going to be for strategic advancing of hydrogen commercialization globally, including their HV vehicles and hydrogen hub development. They're going to get their money in two tranches. First half, $50 million is going to be directed to that First Nations hub project up in Canada. $50 million, start building it. You've got your company, you got your approval, you got your land. Let's get this going. The second 50 million euros is for finding other investment or acquisitions. It's money to play with, money to go out and buy more building blocks to build onto this. So the companies made a lot of deals here. They got a lot of little companies that are all joining them for one project. That's good. 
They're not alone. We see them bringing on other people. We heard them mention that they're in Barbados, that they have uh, contracts in India through one of their partners that they're going to be able to go to. So this is opening up, folks. Hydrogen is opening up around the world and here in America. As I said, I think HVs are going to be much bigger than EVs. EVs are going to fall by the wayside. And don't forget, all that EV technology we're using in the cars, it's not going to go to waste. All we have to do is stop using lithium batteries and start using fuel cells. I mean, we had toys that could use alkaline batteries, lithium batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries. All you got to do is make the wiring proper to be working. They can fix all that we've got. I think hydrogen is going to be hot. It's going to be king, folks. And this is just one more company. And I like the chart. She took a run. She's cooled off, but she kept a lot of her gains from yesterday. And being in a hot sector, I think she's one to watch. Let's go take a look at the chart. So we're charting Ron's Motor Group on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We got Ron, ticker R-O-N-N, opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. And as you can clearly see, she's been in a downtrend this entire time. It was a year ago, we had our 52-week high of about 25 and a half cents. And in April, we had an extreme low of triple zero two. Now, what stands out to me on this chart is the explosion of volume we have had the last three months. We had nothing to talk about before then. It grew for about two months, then started to taper off, and the last three days has been the most volume we have ever seen for the entire year. Now, I know it's tough to see here, but take my word for it, every single oscillator is hot and going to the moon right now. You can see that looking at our RSI. It is clear up to 92 on our yearly chart. That is a hot chart. I am liking it. It's coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. So now we've got a high of seven and a half cents. Our 200 day on a serious decline, getting closer and closer to the price. And though she's not really close to the price here, the price jumped up to it to meet it, which is good. This shows us intention, incentive. It wants to climb. At least we thought she came back down here and she's been flat for months. Even though the 200 day SMA was getting closer and closer and closer, she never made an attempt to break out until here recently. Now we're going to focus in on that here in just a minute, but I want to grab up some supports and resistances. So I'm going to grab my line here and first we're going to grab a support. You never know, she could fall. You want to know where she's going to bounce. Well, that's a very strong support right there. So if she does fall down to 005, chances are she's going to bounce. Now let's grab some resistances. Uh, we got one about right there. That is about a penny and a half. And we got another one roughly there. That is 2.2 cents. And let's grab a high one right there. That is just over four cents. So now we've got an idea of what we're shooting for. Let's zoom in on current events. So here's our price up underneath the 20, the 50, dead flat, doing nothing. Then she jumps up onto the 50, gets excited, and has this little bounce. That ain't no little bounce, folks. She started this bounce at about, uh, let's call it triple zero five, and she went up here to double zero three three. You're looking at over 600% run on that little bounce. Then she came back down to that extreme low of triple zero two and she hung out underneath the 50 all this time until she was ready to break out. Pre-market, after-market, I don't know. She got up on top of the 50. She was at double zero one at this point three days ago and today we had a high of single zero one seven. That is a 1,700% run in just three days. From this low bubble, to the high, we are over 5,000% gains in the last 20 days. She not only broke out over the 200 today, folks, she ripped it. She went through two of those resistances, has pulled back, and she is way up here at 1.2 cents, way above the 200 day SMA. And the 200 day SMA is now flat. That's when you get your runs, when the 200 goes flat and starts to climb. And here comes all of our other SMAs. They have all taken a strong turn and they're starting to climb too. Just like our oscillators. 
Every single one of them is going to the moon, except our RSI. It is falling, but it's still in the overbought. Now, I know a lot of you don't like to get into a stock when it's in the overbought. That sounds like it's too much of a good thing, so it's going to back off. Well, yeah, sooner or later, in eventually. But look, our RSI has been up here for three days. So it's not like they have to come down anytime soon. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Flat, flat, flat. Nothing going on. Now, day four, day five ago, she was getting a little heat, showing a little activity, but it wasn't until three days ago she took off, jumping onto that nine-day escalator. She rode that all the way up, and she is still pushing up after market hours. Now, what's concerning here is that 9-day SMA is getting a little far from the 20-day SMA. Notice how close the rest of them are together. Think of each SMA and the price having rubber bands between them all. They're allowed to stretch, get further and further apart, but at some point, they come flying on back. So we got to be careful how far these stretch apart from each other. Right now, this is looking picture perfect and strong. But watch for a pullback. Oscillators, they're looking good. There's a little bit of cool off, but really they're just going sideways right now. Except our RSI, which is climbing. That means the price is rising right now. Let's come on down to our five-day, five-minute. I'm going to call that a perfect chart. Why? Because we got a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner regardless of what went on in between. You set up the bubbles like that, that's a perfect chart. We had a low bubble four days ago of triple zero seven. We're at a high here of single zero one seven. I don't know the math exactly, but that is about 2,500% run in four days. Do you see why we're looking at this stock? She is on an uptrend right now. She's above her 200. She was above her 50. Off of this high, she came down underneath that 50, but she's pushed herself right back up. Everything is looking pretty decent. Oscillators, we got a recovery on our PPO, recovery on our MACD, and our RSI is climbing. She's looking good, folks. She is breaking through our 1.5 resistance. Once she gets above this and starts bouncing on top, She'll be working towards that 2.2 and ultimately to that 4. I like Ron. She's in the right sector. A lot of money's pouring into this sector. A lot of people are paying attention to hydrogen. And her chart is hot. Come on, folks. Do a little bit of DD yourself. Back up what I've just shared with you, and I think you'll be as excited as I am. Remember, <laughs> the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.